We're back and today, once again, Crew Dragon and Starship are the topics of conversation. Then of course, we'll finish with our honorable mention. I'm Kevin and welcome to this family room edition of SpaceX in the News. For the first time since I first reported on Starship's existence in Boca Chica back in December of 2018, we're gonna begin today's news with not Starship. On Wednesday, SpaceX and NASA began their streams of the Demo-2 launch hours before the NASA astronauts even entered the capsule. And I found it to be quite entertaining and informative, showing us some pretty cool behind the scenes videos like Elon and Jim meeting with Bob and Doug, and also some insightful clips like this one featuring the SpaceX suit. A new tradition was started at Pad 39A with the signing of the meatball just outside the capsule. I wonder if someone since has taken White out to those signatures. The crew then entered into the capsule, the arm was retracted, and loading of the propellant began. But the Florida weather was 50-50 and it wasn't getting much better. Check out this Greg Scott image of a front moving right over the cape about an hour prior to liftoff. And so around T minus 17 minutes, the final decision was made to scrub. Another 10 minutes past T zero. Oh. 1640, 1645 local, I think we'll probably be clear on all the rules, but uh, not quite, not quite going to make it for this. In Dragon SpaceX, unfortunately, um, we are not going to launch today. You are go for 5.100 launch scrub. 5.100, it was a good effort by the teams and we understand and we'll uh, meet you there. But look on the bright side of things. If it wasn't for the weather, the launch would be over now and you wouldn't have a launch to look forward to on Saturday because that's when the next opportunity is, tomorrow at 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time. NASA's and SpaceX's coverage will begin at 11 a.m. and we'll see if the weather decides to play nice. So far, it's 50-50 again. NASA will be having a weather briefing today at 4 p.m. Thank you everyone who tuned in for my eccentric party. We had a lot of fun. However, we'll be doing things slightly different for tomorrow's stream. Earlier this week, Elon Musk told the press that he was redirecting SpaceX's priorities to be very focused on the crew launch. And so testing in Boca Chica for Starship was put on pause and the 150 meter hop is still likely weeks away. But a few new developments have been happening at the South Texas site. SpaceX placed a weight simulator box full of rolls of steel on top of SN4 because even the single Raptor engine that will be used for the upcoming hop is so powerful, the vessel could benefit from the extra weight of a nose section to help it tame its throttling. And yesterday, Highway 4 was closed for Starship SN4's second static fire with Raptor 20 and 4th overall. And this time, no extra flamage was spotted under the vehicle afterward. Today, SN4 performed its fifth static fire test and everything went well, at least at first, but just moments after the burn ended, the prototype vehicle underwent a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. So I guess you can mark it official that SN5 will be doing the 150 meter hop. Because look, honestly, I don't know what altitude SN4 got up to. So SN4 is no more, SN5 is completing its stacking, SN6 is right behind it, and now parts for SN7 have also been seen lying around the site. What is, what is happening? It's chaotic. Everyone just relax. Okay. A notum with the FAA is still in place for ground testing through June 5th, and just yesterday, a new one was posted, restricting flights up to 26,000 feet on Monday. And just today, another notum was scheduled for Tuesday, but now with the RUD situation, all of these things will change. But it gets even better. The FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation has issued a green light to SpaceX for suborbital flights beginning yesterday. SpaceX is now authorized to conduct flight operations for Starship on a suborbital trajectory with translation to the landing pad at the Boca Chica launch site. And speaking of the future, as far as future launches are concerned, the month of June is looking quite busy for the company. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Monday, Virgin Orbit did a test run of its Launcher 1 vehicle, an orbital class rocket designed to take small sats into LEO and beyond by hitching a ride on the bottom of a carrier aircraft and igniting like a missile at war. While everything was looking nominal up to the point of release, nine seconds into flight, the booster's engine flamed out due to a malfunction. Virgin said a lot of things worked perfectly up to that point and that they did collect a lot of valuable data during the test, but yet have to determine the cause of the anomaly. 
You know, a wise man once said, orbit is hard. Good luck, virgins. Before we wrap things up, I just want to thank everyone who watched my parachute documentary that covers everything about rocket recovery systems. It released last week. Your responses were amazing. I really do appreciate all the love and support you've shown. It was a lot of hard work for me to make, but I'm so glad it's been enjoyed by all you guys. And for those of you that haven't had a chance to watch it yet, maybe this little accolades teaser will convince you to give it a try. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you eccentric members for your support of the channel and thank you all for watching. Be sure to check back in tomorrow for SpaceX's next opportunity to put man into space. Until that time, Godspeed.